before I open it up to anyone in the public to speak on a, any action item, I will uh, open it up to students only who would like to speak on any issue of student current students who would like to hear what you have to say. Um, and then um, you're more than welcome to attend the special meeting as well. We want to give you the opportunity to speak um, and hopefully go home and not get to sleep. So if you are interested, you would like to speak on any they're already signed up. Okay, so the, the students who come and sort of line up um, who would like to speak. Again, this is only for students. Um, and after that, I'll open it up to any public uh, participation on action items only. So, uh, Mr. Chair, do you want to start calling? I'll read, I'll read the first five names out okay. now. Yeah. 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 Ben, Marshall, Eli, and then we have Michael, Zeke. Okay, so um, what we need to do is come up. We have to speak into the uh, microphone so that uh, we will work on uh, videotape. And then if you can just tell us your name and what school you go to, and then we only have three minutes uh, for the ladies. So many of you can take that and appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, good evening. My name is Valentina Spadia. I am the student body vice president at Periton. Um, I'm here this evening along with a lot of my peers in order to address the name change of our annual fundraising event, previously known as Mr. Harriton. Um, just so that everybody has a little background on this amazing event that is um, student run, we fundraise over $30,000 for multiple charities, including the Lower Marion Scholarship Fund, which helps our peers go to college. So this is a really, um, it's a really special event that not only sponsors school spirit and fosters a real sense of school community um, in a school that sometimes struggles to really get motivated to be passionate about going to Harriton. Um, we really come together that night and we feel that the process of um, the changing of the name has been very unfair because the student body was not allowed or given the opportunity to really debate this issue. Um, the student body is simply not in favor of the name change. There have been polls, there, um, it has been communicated to me and my fellow student council officers as I am speaking on behalf of myself and the president, Lauren Levy. Um, we agree with the idea of inclusivity. We embrace the idea that everybody should feel included and welcomed in their school community, but infringing on the satirical nature of what this show started out as is truly infringing on the idea of inclusivity because this show is a satire. It is mocking how um, beauty pageants oftentimes objectify women and it's really highlighting the oftentimes misogynistic pieces of our culture. So in changing the name, truly, that satire will be changing. I was told in multiple meetings with my school's administration, headed by Mr. Weinstein, that I should put a smile on my face and act complicit in, um, in the changing of the name, even though I had expressed on multiple um, explicit um, in multiple explicit conversations that I simply disagreed and that my constituents disagreed because I was elected not to pop the resumes of the people above me. I was elected in order to express the opinions of my peers and my peers who are brave enough to come here tonight and stand in front of all of you who, who have all this authority. I believe that leadership is truly showing that your morals are the most important thing. And we were met, instead of open dialogue, we were met with a predetermined and evidently solidified decision, whereas this should have been an opportunity for open dialogue where the student council could truly express the opinions of the student body. And even if tonight you decide against us and force this change, at least it's coming after all of our voices have been heard, and we really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. We're here tonight to represent the 95% of students who do not believe that the name of Mr. Ayrton should be changed. Many could not make it because of tests, quizzes, homework, but wanted to be here. The reason we are here is that our own administration has refused, time and time again, to engage in a public and civil discussion of the matter. 
Note that not only have our administrators refused to engage in the public, they have also denied new names to the show without reason, such as Dr. Harrington and Harrington's top model. When uh, student council asked, they were met with no means no, no reason provided. The word ram, as in the school's mascot, was banned from any new title because, quote, ram is a male sheep. The ram is and has been the mascot of Harrison High School, and no one has complained about it because of the fact the rams are male. We call ourselves, regardless of gender, rams in terms of sports and clubs and activities. Because of all this, we've come tonight to speak about the issue, which was, as an administrator put it to us when we first heard about the story, spurred on by someone at the district level. Many other students will go into detail of the show, its origin, what it means to the school and the community, and why changing the name is such a bad idea. We know the district wants to see more diversity in the show itself. However, changing the name achieves nothing. The first mixed Harrington will star 10 male contestants. It should also be noted that at Lower Marion, a girl has won Mr. LM, and was totally fine with her being called Mr. LM. Simply put, the students of Harrington who aren't trying out, aren't trying out because some aren't trying out because something deters them, it's because either they don't have the time or have no interest in it. Simply put, changing the name does nothing. This event is the last remaining part of the school spirit Keratin has left. We don't show up to sports games, we don't support other people in the same way that this show does. And something that members of the community will remember far after their high school experience is over. Is the winner henceforth going to be called Mix Harrington regardless of their self-identified gender? If a male wins Mix Harrington, don't they have the right to ask to be called Mr. Harrington since that is their preferred prefix? Following that reasoning for a moment, all 10 contestants this year, as I've stated before, identify as male. Thus, no matter who wins, they will call themselves Mr. Harrington, we can assume. And shouldn't the name of the show reflect that this year? If you're not able to pick which name you prefer, isn't that just as bad as on the issue you're trying to fix? There are many questions that administration has been unwilling to answer up until this point, saying, quote, it's not a discussion. As you can see tonight, there is a discussion to be had, students willing to have it, and our administration has failed us in allowing to do so. Thank you. Ben Newman, and I am from Harrison High School and a contestant in this year's Mix Harrison. When administration reviews an activity under school jurisdiction, there are a couple questions they are likely to ask. The first is, does this event intend to harm community members? The answer in Mr. Harrison's case is no. Mr. Harrison does not intend to harm community members. Mr. Harrison is an 11-year-old charity show with the concept of male students in a beauty pageant, essentially a satire on masculinity with dancing and costumes, it was meant to bring together the community and does just that. It's the only school-wide event that sells out our entire auditorium. Administration would conclude that the event was not intentionally harmful and that any harm done was not intentional. The second test is that can we find a sizable community, minority or majority, that perceives that they are adversely affected by this event. In US justice, however, there's nothing about how someone perceives an event. It's about the intention. When we change value events, valuable events, because people perceive harm, someone's feelings and perceptions become the law, regardless of the event's intent, and completely ignoring its positive impacts for our community. Granted, this is not entirely true in all cases, we have an obli obligation to better our community and to change our ways if a sizable minority or majority perceives that they are hurt by this event. But there are no communities of people that perceive that they are adversely affected by this event. While administration is changing this event largely because they perceive female students are disenfranchised by the name Mr. Harriton and do not have equity of access as was formalized in several policies that expect inclusivity, <coughs> It would seem that there is not a sizable majority or minority of females that feel hurt by this event, or like they don't have fair and equal opportunities to participate. Furthermore, groups to protect vulnerable minorities like the Gender and Sexuality Alliance don't agree with the name change. So, you're picking an argument not on intent, but on perception of not the majority, but a mystery minority, not advocated for by student leadership who are women, or minority advocacy groups like the GSA. You picked an argument that, and then made it a mandate, and you are expecting that teenagers will do exactly what you want them to. Anyone have kids? 
That tactic surely doesn't work with me. There was not enough assistant, con assistance convincing, convincing, including of enough stakeholders, and administration has reserved the right to opine on every name decision and promptly rejected most of them. But in all of this, doesn't administration have better things to do to strengthen our community? How about the ec epidemic of dueling among high school kids, reversing years of anti-smoking campaigns? How about our building, which was built of inflexible cinder block? Can I finish? Nope. Inflexible cinder block. Can you please? Two little group workspaces for the innovative, collaborative, and ever-changing uh, world of 10 years later. Administration used this time in Mindshare instead to fight for eight years to change the name of an event that was not intended to hurt anyone and has no sizable group that feels hurt. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Marshall Work. I'm also a senior at Harrison High School, and I've never spoken at one of these events before, but I really think that the things that have been going on with Mr. Harrison have been are, are worthy of everyone's attention. I'm actually less concerned about the actual name change, and I'm a lot more concerned about the process by which the name change has occurred. Through conversations that I've had with numerous people, student council officers, here's what I've gathered. Harrison administration declined the proposed names, as was earlier mentioned, Dr. Harrison and Harrison's next top model, but opted not to provide any reasoning, instead only restating that the names were not approved. Those names were produced by student council, which also happens to run the entire offense, and student council correctly advised the administration that the student body would be unhappy with the change, but the administration showed little care. So just to reiterate that, our student council officers who were elected by the students to represent the students told administration that the students were opposed to this change, but the administration didn't seem to care. Why do we even have a student council if its inputs are only considered when administration conveniently agrees with what it's hearing? Our school promotes respect, but is this really the respect that our students deserve? Because I don't feel particularly respected when 95% of students, as shown by an HHS TV poll, oppose what is happening, but it keeps happening anyway. I think it's important to remember that with no students, there's a student-run event. There's no show in the first place. Why pretend that our voices matter by having a student council if in reality it's a sham whose opinion is not legitimately taken into account? This is a fundamental lack of awareness and lack of care for the student's opinion, which completely defeats the purpose of having a student council. The way that it's supposed to work is that when 95% of students are comfortable with an existing president, especially if it's a president that's been wildly successful by any measure, nothing really needs to change. Instead, the show's popularity, which does a lot of good, it results in thousands of dollars for low and scholarship fund, is being jeopardized in favor of political correctness. What is more important to our administration? Gathering as much money as possible to help kids go to college, or flexing its muscle by bypassing student leadership to make a change that is not representative of the student body. I find it offensive that students' opinions aren't really valued and that our student council officers and our friends were blatantly ignored and not offered justification as to why. We all hope that something will be done to ensure that students' voices are heard. previously, almost all of my peers in my grade have not. And going into Herodin this year, by far the most anticipated event was Mr. Herodin. Now changing the name to Mix Herodin, many of my peers in my grade have said that they would not attend the show based on the name change. Now I know that this is not uh, true of all the grades, but one of the most uh, uh, or the best way that uh, Mr. Harrington gets most of its funds is through ticket sales. Now, if we were to cut ticket sales based on the name change, that would be 
uh, taking away money from charity over a name change which 95% of the student body disagrees with. Uh, based on this change, uh, this would create many uh, cuts to charity and I don't think that uh, it's right to go against 95%, the majority of the school, and cut money towards charity just to include a little bit of the population. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Becker. I'm a senior and I'm a contestant in this year's show. At Herodon, unlike typical high schools, our biggest event isn't a football game or a dance. It's Mr. Herodon. For 11 years, Mr. Herodon has shined as Herodon's prized social event, raising money for charities and bringing the school together. Around mid-February, you will start to see a large line of people flooding the hallway, willing to sacrifice their lunch to have the opportunity to buy a $15 ticket for the show. Students are tasked with listening to the announcements to see how many tickets are left, because chances are that if you didn't wait in that outrageously long line the day before, there won't be a ticket for you the next day. But this year could be different. Throughout the past week, I've approached my colleagues and asked them their thoughts on the new name change. All of the responses I received were along the same lines. Why and how? Why? We had an extremely successful show that raised over $30,000 and drew support and unity within the community. As my father says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. How? If you have a 95% majority that includes student government, how could this change possibly happen? Through Facebook messages, online petitions, alternate name suggestions, the students have tried to work with administration, but students have been blatantly disrespected and told that their opinions don't matter. This is very frustrating as a contestant. For one reason, we won't be getting the support of our classmates and friends after all the hard work that we will put forth. But the most concerning issue is the money that is going to the Ronald McDonald House American Heart Association and Lower Marion Scholarship Fund. No one will want to buy the new t-shirt with the non-binary pronoun mixed in front of Herodin. The people want the iconic mister. Many people I have talked to expressed their displeasure and said that they might not even go to the show, let alone buying a t-shirt. It's a matter of school tradition and pride. Do my classmates and I have school pride at the moment? Now, our leaders have turned our back on us and chose to hinder with what we value most. The name change isn't the only difference from this year and past years. This year, our students are more united than ever before. The real question is, will we let the, will we let the opinions of the few dictate the many? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Zeke Milwad, and I'm a senior at Harrison High School. At Harrison, I wear many hats. I'm a student, a mixed Harrison contestant, and an ally of the LGBTQ plus community. All of these roles are equally important to me, and they each contribute to my belief that LMSD should support the Mr. Harrison title. First and foremost, I want to articulate that I embrace the value of inclusion. It is imperative that students throughout LMSD feel safe and secure. However, protection should not come at the cost of a meaningful learning opportunity. Striking the Mr. Harridan label without student input or even knowledge of the decision robs the Harridan community of a relevant dialogue concerning inclusion. Rather than teaching students a valuable lesson, the abrupt name change has spurred a whirlwind of animosity and anguish at Harridan. Students that oppose a shift are left feeling underrepresented and inconsequential. Conversely, the few that endorse this change are siloed in their own view, the administration depriving them of any dissenting opinion. Regardless of your view on the matter, both camps have been left in the dark during this ordeal, including our student council. The administration's shortcomings in updating the Herodin community concerning this change underscores the importance of dialogue in this matter. Generally, any cultural shift rests on the strong backing of a community. Evidently, Mix Herodin lacks this crucial support. Maintaining the Mr. Herodin title 
in conjunction with cultivating a discussion surrounding this controversy is pivotal to fostering change. On the other hand, erasing a cultural fixture is damaging to the heritage community. Furthermore, the decision to strike the Mr. Harridan title runs contrary to the core values of the Lower Marion School District. According to the district's mission statement, Lower Marion School District strives to ensure that all students achieve their highest level of critical thinking. Rather than encouraging unnecessary exchange regarding this shift, the administration has deprived students of agency. In essence, adopting the mixed Harridan title not only spurs animosity in the community, but opposes the very foundation of Lower Marion School District. Thank you for your time, and I urge you to keep the Mr. Harrington title. I've spent a lot of time dissecting this topic. 
And while I applaud LMSD's awareness and attempts to fight for our community, I don't think they know as much as they think they do about these issues. But while they still might be ignorant, they are definitely not as ignorant as some people in this country and in our world. The fact that we are able to create gender inclusive policies like policy 259 is incredible and I'm very thankful that those attempts are made. But the changing of the name Mr. Harrison was in my opinion a step in a sideways direction. Now while I do in no means represent the community as a whole, it's not like I stand alone in this opinion. I have extensive conversations with other women, people in GSA, which I'm a part of, and people in stage. And while I'm yet to find anyone who has ever been offended by the name Mr. Harrington, that doesn't mean that those people don't exist. I'm not discrediting those who feel a certain way based on their identity. And I understand why a crowd of vocal students might overshadow those who are largely ignored. The issue is when a policy is hurting more than it is helping. I myself and many others in GSA have felt minor targeting as a result of this decision. It seems like the blame is continuously cast on us because we are the ones who would have had a say in a decision like this, right? But we didn't. No one asked our opinion and no one consulted us. Mr. Weinstein that said that this is because we are only a small portion of the community and this decision is bigger than us. But where they messed up is not recognizing the fact that this starts at us and it affects us. This policy is meant to stand for those who have been silenced. This decision, in its rawest form, is supposed to be benefiting those in the LGBT community and women in general. But what happens when those groups don't agree and none of us had a say in it? At the end of the day, the name is not the biggest issue, but the idea behind it. While the change alone may seem harmless, the admins are too short-sighted to understand the wider and far more significant consequences of fixing something that isn't broken for a cause they don't understand. Mr. Harrington is a satire on female beauty pageants. The entire point of it is to make fun of the objectification of women in these pageants. The essence of the show is taken away when you pretend you're being socially conscious for wanting to make it gender expansive, expansive because that's not the point. I'm not saying that, that, shouldn't be, that women shouldn't be allowed to audition. In fact, I think that every year the entire student body should be refreshed, refreshed on the essence of Mr. Harrington, the rules, the audition process, and the purpose for new students. These things are usually spread through word of mouth, which is a breeding ground for rumors and false information. Most people don't even know that women can audition. That needs to change, not the name. I think that the people who were offended by the title had no actual idea of what the event was about. On the surface, I can understand why it might seem sexist. But, I under but understanding the event and but understanding the events and the roots of its con conception is more important than the name change. I understand that this is bigger than me, but as I said, it starts at the LGBT community. We are the grassroots of these issues, and no one knows better than us what it's like to deal with it at Heritage. Heriton High School. To me, Mr. Heriton is about students taking initiative. What everyone seems to be forgetting amongst the name change is the dozens of students who work thousands of hours, thousands of collective hours putting on a great show. From the art, choreography, music, stage management, lighting, sound, and Heriton TV crew, there are many, many opportunities for students across the school to be involved, regardless of gender. Further, the entirety of the student council is responsible for selling ads and raising money for a good cause we support. And at the end of the day, that's what Mr. Harrington is all about, raising huge amounts of money for local and international organizations while entertaining and bringing together the student body. You would think that an event with the empowering message of community and charity would be championed. Instead, it has seen the opposite. Rather than opening a dialogue with members of student council and members of the GSA and SAGE clubs, Offend, uh, offering concerns, our officers, four out of five of which identify as female, were told not only that they had to change the name, but council officers were told to act as though it was their idea in the first place, citing that it was for that it was the right thing to do for the community. Essentially, they were told to mislead and deceive their fellow students into thinking the change is something the student body wanted. The question of whether all students may participate as contestants sim simply the question of whether all students may participate as contestants simply isn't one. Everyone is allowed to try out. The greater culture of the student body, however, still remains that the show is a satire on beauty pageants, which is why so many passionate students take charge in arguably more prominent roles of organizing the 
in organizing an event of such magnitude. In fact, 95% of students who responded to a poll said that the name should not be changed. Many students are here to speak on that fact. Their opinions and ideas were ignored and disregarded. The greatest victim of this situation is the charities and the charities that the funds are raised for. The competition is an institution in the greater Lower Merion community with some local businesses sponsoring the event for over a decade. Not only to men not not to mention the sharp decrease in ticket sales as a result of the student body who threatened to boycott the event as a result of the name change. Who is going to make up the $30,000 of charitable donations if, the, if this event fails? And is it worth pillaging a beloved tradition and fundraiser in the name of public perception? Thank you. My name is also Jacob. I'm from Penn Valley. Um, living in such a politically divided time, and in a time where teenagers such as us have been more active in our community and politics, it is very disappointing that there was an utter lack of student involvement in making this decision. As a junior last year, I got the pleasure of participating in the show Mr. Heron. The build-up and anticipation was remarkable. Everybody was pumped to see the show, and the, the lead-up was just energizing. Everybody was excited. But this year, there is no anticipation, only disappointment. A sudden decision like this has stripped the students of their voice, and that is unacceptable. Although, this controversy did do something that no basketball game or football game or school event has done, it has really brought our student body together and increased our school spirit. Over the last few weeks, the student body has tirelessly worked to reverse this name change in a way I have never seen in four years at Harriman. Between creating petitions that have gained hundreds of signatures, as well as lobbying students to come here, as you can see, to this meeting, this is the greatest culmination of school spirit that has taken place in the last four years, and that should be rewarded. I urge you guys to consider helping us out with this and keeping the name the same. It truly is a great tradition. The show formerly known as Mr. Harrigan is a lot of fun and very entertaining for the audience. However, we forget why the show even exists. It's for charity. Every year the amount of money has increased, and this past year we raised over $30,000 for charities such as the American Heart Association, the Ronald McDonald House, and most importantly, the Lower Marion Township Scholarship Fund. The Lower Marion Township Scholarship Fund awards grants on a financial need basis to graduates of Lower Marion and Herodon High Schools for post-high school education. This includes funds for colleges, universities, vacational, technical, or business schools for up to four years or eight semesters, all according to the Lower Marion School District's website. Last year, the Lower Marion Township Scholarship Fund awarded over $125,000 to 115 students from both high schools, including a Mr. Harrington contestant, Alex Wu. Having a new name would diminish all quality of name recognition and would make it difficult than ever before to gain support of local businesses as they may not know what the show is. As Ben Newman of the Harrington Banner said in his op-ed, as well as another speaker tonight, and a Mr. Harrington contestant, Historically, women have participated in all asset aspects of production in the show as partners to the 10 male contestants, but not as contestants themselves. If this is the new standard, where does it end? Do we need to change boys football to football to protect girls who may want to play on the team? Do we have to change girls volleyball to volleyball to protect boys title IX rights? Changing Mr. Herod's name has many implications that we as a community need to consider. The intention of changing Mr. Harrington's culture to encourage female contestants is only valid if it is shared by the student body. The school missed an opportunity to teach a real world lesson. Cultural change happens with conversation and collaboration between the government and the governed, not through issuing ultimatums. Throughout the process of this name change, administration at our school has said they are fine not having a show if the name is not changed. It is not about the show or the name, 
but the money that is donated to the needy people in our community. And Mr. Herodin is one of the largest ways to help. Thank you. talk to you today about my thoughts on the Mr. Harrigan name change, as the rest of us are. And um, I've thought about this a lot, maybe too much, because I feel like people have so many different interpretations of what they believe is right and also essentially what happened. Here's some, uh, here's some thoughts I'd like to share. In May of three years ago, I came to talk to you all about Passing Policy 259, which protects and gives rights to trans and gender non-conforming students in the district. As you know, that policy was adopted by a unanimous vote by all of you. Um, and from that day on, there have been many improvements in favor of equality for students of all genders. The use of this policy for um, the use of that policy for educating <coughs> educating teachers about LGBT LGBT plus Q plus issues, and most importantly, acquiring gender neutral bathrooms, which the LGBT community at Harrington and other schools are so, so grateful for. As one of the presidents of Heritage GSA, Gender Sexuality Alliance, I have talked to our approximate 20 members of the club, and we all agree that changing the name of Mr. Heritage to, some, uh, to something you, as Mr. DePaul said, as in us, um, believe is more gender inclusive is not what we want. I don't believe the name should change because the narrative of Mr. Heritage is to create a satire of female beauty pageant. The show is open for all genders to audition. However, every year this event has gone on at Harrington, there um, and there have only been male contestants so far. This show purposely pokes fun at stereotypical gender roles, and the sold out and the sold out audience enjoys every second. Members of GSA and Sage met with our principal, Mr. Weinstein, our athletic director, Ms. Ferguson, and our student council sponsor, Mr. DePaul. They taught uh, they. They talked us through the process of changing the, of changing the name and why we think we would have one with this. And we adamantly told them no. They assumed without consulting the students that it would positively affect us. Specifically, we were told that they were doing this for us, that we would like, that we would like this. And as people before me said, that uh, this is not how this played out in school. While here the administration decided to change the name, uh, to change the name, we were never truly, we will never truly know, and I think that's part of the problem. Furthermore, because the greater majority of Heritage believes the name should stay the same, administration should work on fixing far more important things that are actually broken, specifically the exclusion of the LGBTQ plus um, subject in health class. Two years ago, what we did in my health class was, um, and uh, all others to go over, um, what we did, <laughs> and all others, to go over the topic of gender and other sexual orientations at the street was to watch and take notes on a 15-minute TED Talk. Maybe some were moved by this acute example of understanding those who are LGBTQ+, but it certainly was not. And my LGBT friends and health weren't either. I believe you should shift your focus from something so insignificant as a letter prefix of an event to something that will affect students at our schools in a, diff in a real way. A way that will make your children more comfortable with themselves, more understanding of the other people different than yourself, and aware of the fact that you can be whoever you want to be. You know, when I see students passing me at Heritage, I wonder what their story is. Like, what's holding them back? Are they grappling with who they are and maybe need some guidance? You have the opportunity to answer all these questions. I even know some, some seniors at Harrington at this liberal and exceedingly accepting school still hide who they are from their parents, families, and friends. They are afraid of the unknown, so create the known and make some changes we actually need in LMSD. As Dr. Evans Boggs said in a kind-hearted email to me after I spoke at that board meeting my freshman year, we undoubtedly have a lot of work to do as a school, a community, a country, but knowing that we have people like you leading the way is inspiring and encouraging. You instill confidence in me that progress will continue. Thank you very much.